So hello, welcome back to the channel, and as the title of this video would suggest, today is the first look, first drive review of the all-new BMW M4 competition. Now, one thing I've noticed over the last few weeks is that pretty much every man, journalist, influencer, YouTuber, Instagrammer, and his dog has had access to this car, which means when the embargo lifts at just past 11 o'clock on Tuesday evening, everyone's gonna see the same thing, the same titles, thumbnails, etc. So while I am gonna give you a bit of a brief overview as to how this car drives on the road shortly, one of the things that was the most controversial when this car launched was, of course, the way it looks. Now, one man's opinion doesn't mean anything. However, I know a group of guys whose working being is to look at criticize and get intimate with how cars look. So I brought the M4 competition down to NVN London and we're gonna run it past all of our detailers. There's over 20 guys here who are gonna walk around it. This is the first time they've ever seen this car in person and they're gonna give us their opinions and a score out of 10 of how they really think the new M4 competition looks. And then we're gonna take this thing out on the road and give you a sort of a brief first drive review. So without further ado, let's put this thing in front of the most critical eyes in the industry. They know their stuff, they know what they like, they know what they don't like, and it's gonna be fascinating to get their opinion as to what they think how the new M4 looks. When I first saw pictures of it, I wasn't happy with it. Now seeing it with the number plate on, I think it looks so much better. Honestly, I don't like it. Yeah, I think it looks sick. The design is real amazing. I think there's too much going on. The grills are too big. It ruins the look of a standard BMW. Yeah, I like it front. It's very nice. I don't like the plastic side bits with the M4 competition. They're either all gloss black or all plastic. It's as simple as that for me. The interior is amazing. Ah, very nice. It's beautiful. Definitely needs bigger wheels. The grill is not the best for, uh, for the BMWs. I prefer the old one. I have to say, um, with a darker color, it looks nicer. I didn't like the mirror too much. I mean, coming to the back of the car, I mean, wow. That really does look quite fantastic. Cool. Inside interior, oh my God. Interior is very cool. Love the interior, 10 out of 10, absolutely love it. It's a very, very, very nice looking car. Even, even these grooves here, it's just the little fine details. I love this carbon fiber roof. I have to say, seeing in person, it's definitely growing on me. The big plus for me is the rear end. The, the rear end, beautiful. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Honestly, for me, you know, the outside of this car is really not that bad. I know it's been controversial, but seriously, the interior, absolutely game changing for this level of car. Anyway, just before we go for the first drive, which I am very excited to share with you, if you're in the market for a pre-owned car, really important that you do the background checks on it to make sure that you're buying something straight, which is why I'm really happy to have teamed up with today's video sponsor, Car Vertical. So, Car Vertical is the one-stop shop for instant vehicle history and car reports. It's a service that could save you thousands by avoiding costly problems such as mileage rollback and even hidden damage reports. Just enter the VIN of the car you're considering and a full report of that vehicle is available immediately, indicating the mileage, any theft reports, accidents, and even if the vehicle was used as a taxi. Just a small amount of missing information from a vehicle's history could mean costly repairs down the road. So make sure you know everything about the car before you buy it. But Car Vertical takes things an extra step by verifying the data to confirm its reliability. Additionally, the system is built on blockchain, which means there's no way to fake or even alter the information. So you've got peace of mind knowing the data's accurate. And with records of over 50 million vehicles, the system can even flag common faults of each model and provide you a visual of the car if historical photos are available. So it's definitely worth checking them out using the link below. Now, 
I've got to say, and because I'm standing behind a camera and you're looking at this through a lens, I will preface this with, I honestly don't think the cameras or the video cameras or whatever it is, does this car justice. Now I'm not sure if it's because of the spec, these contrasting black components on this car against that sort of battleship gray color really blend in quite well. I did see a sort of iridescent lime green version of this car when I picked it up from BMW UK. And I will say that those nostrils on a brighter colored car might not play to the eyeballs quite so strongly. But let's just uh, check this out. There are some subtle details on this car which I quite like. Take for example, rather than wedging the camera in off center, like most brands would stick their sort of camera or radar system in there and it would be this sort of chunky block ruining the symmetry of the car. BMW have quite nicely integrated it smack bang in the middle of the car. I quite like that. And in a minute, I'll show you around the back of how they've integrated the reverse camera as well, which is really trick. Well, now this is the competition version. Uh, it's running 503 brake horsepower, six cylinder turbocharged engine. Uh, the drive that I had on the way over here, uh, the car has so much torque and it is a lovely driving experience, which we'll share that with you shortly. First of all, let's get onto the topic of these wheels. Now, surprisingly, these are 19 inch. I actually think they could have gone a little bit larger and no doubt the aftermarket tuning uh, culture will get their hands on this and lower it and put larger rims. But one thing I did identify on the drive is that the car is actually a little bit stiff, even in road mode, uh, which I guess you could consider to be its sort of daily driver mode. After all, as sporty as this car is, it is something that people will live with on the daily. And so my opinion might be that they opted for 19 inches so that they could afford themselves a, a taller tire sidewall in which to uh, absorb some of the road bumps because it does feel a bit stiff. It's not uncomfortably so at all, but it does feel, what's the word, sort of uh, torsionally purposeful if that's such a thing. But I can see this car perhaps being lower just at a notch and perhaps some larger wheels. But anyway, that's perhaps one for the future. But I do think the styling and the design of the wheels are very intricate. These are a sort of graphite painted wheel with this diamond turned edge contrasting here. And we've got these great contrasting red, very large six pot front brake calipers. Now in contrast to that, and this is something I'm a little bit surprised at, the rear brakes are tiny. Now, I think they're effectively a two pot brake caliper. Now this car um, is over 1700 kilograms, so it is no ballerina. I just did expect them to have fitted larger brakes on the rear. Having said that, we'll have to uh, drive it spiritedly, perhaps on track to see if that's uh, made much difference or if it could benefit from larger brakes. Now, let's take you around the rear. Uh, we've got this competition styling pack, which has so much carbon fiber. We've got this beautiful carbon fiber wing coming off the rear boot lid. Down here, the diffuser on this thing. I mean, no doubt that it is by and large an aesthetic contribution, but surrounding these fat tailpipes, we've got this massive carbon fiber diffuser. Um, we'll share with you in a minute how this thing sounds from the inside, and no doubt we'll do a start up and revs from the outside too, but despite the fact that it is heavily turbocharged, I'm gonna say from here out, it actually doesn't sound that bad. Now then, Going round to the rear and discussing the integration of the rear parking camera, can you spot it? Probably not, because they've done a phenomenal job of putting it right in here. See that? Just there. There it is, that is the rear parking camera. I think they've integrated that beautifully, rather than, again, oftentimes it'll be hanging out from underneath the sort of boot lid and oftentimes off center as well. So the fact that they've thought about the small details to maintain symmetry on this car is awesome. Once again, we've got Everything versus the standard car is so much more flared out. Everything continues. I like how this black contrasting panel here, the line of it continues out towards the flared sill here. Now then, we've got to talk about the interior. The interior on this car is absolutely gorgeous. Behold the iridescently specced M4 competition with the sports seats, the carbon sports seats. They are fully carbon backed. Look at that, they're completely carbon backed, but the sculpture of them, look at them. I love, I mean, this has become a signature feature now, but the glowing M4 badge, you can see that I actually like, if I just close the door, I love how you can see that glowing through the windows there. Pretty nice touch. But 
back inside, I'm just gonna pull on this tag. And again, small details like this, look. There's the iconic three colors of M there on things like seatbelt, just there, and also on the pull rung here. Look at the sculpture of these. They are, honestly, these wouldn't go amiss in a thoroughbred supercar. The seats are stunning. And you might be thinking, yeah, but are they comfortable? Share that with you shortly, but in the short answer is yes, they are brilliant. And again, look at these grab handles that they've got here. Look at that. I love that you can see straight through them. It's very angular design. Also, when you look down, you've got this big brace here of carbon fiber that sits between your legs and it's just a beautiful place to be. Back down here, look, vast contrasting carbon fiber. Look at these carbon fiber intakes here. There's actually quite a lot of carbon on this car, both inside and out. But I think this color suits it. The contrasting black works really well with it. I would imagine considering the controversy surrounding the massive kidney grill air intakes, this thing would look mega all in black. Now, one thing that I do think has helped aesthetically is the placement of the number plate. Now it does break up this massive gaping intakes here, which have caused so much fuss online. Honestly, I'm gonna have to try and take some decent photos of this. I'm not sure if it's an angle thing or just having to see it in person. I actually think it looks okay. Lots of carbon. Caps on the wing mirrors, all in carbon too. And once again, further beautiful integration of the camera. I say that on the likes of something like a Ferrari uh, F8 Tributo, for example, I'm not joking, the camera sticks out from the wing mirror that far. It's absolutely ridiculous. So when a brand goes to the extent of integrating it like this and you don't even see that good integration on something like a Ferrari, it's no small thing to ignore. Just as a quick example, conveniently have ourselves an F8 Tributo here and behold how not to integrate a parking camera into your wing mirror. I mean, what is that? So yes, BMW, top marks on the integration of the cameras. Okay, and how could we not talk about the now iconic carbon fiber roofs on M3 and M4? This insert is actually gorgeous. What might not be doing it justice on camera is these are heavily sort of embossed. These actually form out of the roof. They're not indented, they're sort of deeply embossed. And they do give a lot of movement and sculpture to the feel of the roof. I like that. A cool detail and I think actually something that this car definitely doesn't do justice on photos is the culmination of its parts in terms of the overall detail of it once you've walked around it picked up on all of these intricate bits of bobs I think you do look at the car as well in a different light it's pretty cool all right so behold the engine bay now sadly despite the fact that this is specced with the optional carbon pack strap brace what's happened the iconic carbon M strut brace is no longer, which is a shame. I'd have maybe expected it on a standard car, but with carbon pack, it's a shame to have seen that not looking so aesthetically pleasing. But this, underneath here, we've got the new uh, three liter six cylinder engine. This, as the competition version, is developing 503 brake horsepower. Torque is 406 pounds, but importantly, this is a shaving of 0.2 seconds off the 0 to 60 time. So we're up to 4.2 seconds now for the regular model and 3.9 for the competition spec. Top speed restricted to 155 miles an hour, but if you specify the driver's pack, which comes with Z rated tires, that lifts it to 188 miles an hour. So if you're spending some time on the Autobahn, probably worth ticking that option. So there you have it, not so ugly after all. I think we even had a 10 out of 10 at one point there. Yeah, honestly, in reality, you've kind of got to see it, because I know if you've only seen the photos so far, you're going to be like, really, I don't know about this. Looks much better in reality. Also, this color in particular absorbs those heavily contrasting parts, uh, and I actually think it suits it. I did see a lime green car when I picked up this car. Not so great, the big nostril thing. That really, yeah, that's there. Now then, as the case would have it, hence van passing by right here, we find ourselves in a very real world scenario, quite rare for this channel. And usually when I uh, go on a car launch or at the first drive of a new car, we are on the groomed, manicured pastures of the Alps or some phenomenal driving environment in which to show a car off in its best light dynamically. I'm approaching the M25 and this is what we call real-world testing. The road isn't that great. The surface is pretty terrible, 
and I think while we regard the M division, the M cars as you know sporty cars that you may even associate with the odd track day, uh, I think most of the miles spent in these are going to be executives commuting, still passionate petrol heads, but there's going to be a lot of this type of driving. And I just thought, you know, what's it feel like? What's the ride like? Because you would look at these seats as absolutely sublime as they are. And you would think there's no way that these are comfortable as a daily proposition. But I have to tell you, it's not the seats which are a consideration. It's actually the suspension. Now, it's not uncomfortable by any means, but there is this purposeful torsion about it. There is a torsional rigidity throughout both suspension and chassis, just reminding you that actually you are in something a little bit spicier than your average 4 Series. However, if I put it from road mode into sport mode, which I guess you could use to pick apart perhaps uh, your favourite British B road, things do get perhaps slightly overly taut. Not obnoxiously stiff, but I am actually quite surprised at how bouncy certain elements of a fairly average dual carriageway are. Let's drop it a cog. You ready? Yeah, it pulls. I mean, this thing pulls hard. Um, I'm not still too keen on how small the rear brakes look. Now, I know on cars the majority of the mass and depletion of energy on the braking is at the front, but the rear brakes, they look piddly and no doubt with the traction control settings, of which there are 10 step dynamic stability control on this car, which will no doubt involve the uh, very intelligent braking system pinching on the rear brakes, depending on the mode you find yourself driving in. I can't help but think that those rear brakes are going to take an absolute pounding if you decide to grab this thing by the scruff of its neck and send it 10 tenths. We do find ourselves on a slight twisty road here, so let's just see what it's all about. Before we hand it back, <laughs> i tell you something. It sounds pretty good. I mean, it's a little synthetic, but it still does put a smile on your face, evidently. The torque's wonderful. I think you can tell it's a little bit heavy under braking. The weight is there. Most of the time it feels a 1500 kilogram car until you come to slam on the anchors and then it feels like a 1700 kilogram car. But other than that, once again, I can't get out of my head that this is a lot more of a, a fast daily driver than a like actual sports car. And I think if you keep in mind that that's probably the brief of this rather than lap times, and I'm sure, look, I'm sure it's you know faster than the previous generation around a track, etc., etc. But on the road is a daily proposition where I just think that most of the time in these things is going to be spent. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm just gonna throw this into this corner real quick and find out what this feels like. I mean, you can tell by the man, the structural rigidity of the chassis. <laughs> and the front end is actually remarkable. And once you're past the apex, you can give it full boot, like full beads. It just squats and goes. Yeah. Once you get it, dynamic, it is actually remarkable what this thing is capable of. So there we have it. Uh, totally different take. Totally different take on the usual first drive review thing. Uh, BMW, if you're tuning into this, thank you so much for inviting me on the sort of first drive launch. Uh, but what, what I would love to do is actually spend a full day on some fantastic driving roads with this thing to give the, the real driving impressions of what this thing is like on a really dynamic road. Perhaps summer, we can speak to BMW, get one of these cars, maybe even try the M3 and take it on a proper trip. That would be very cool. But uh, yeah, questions and comments below. Thanks again to the Tiba MVM for giving us their time and impressions on the car. Uh, came off much better than I thought it would actually, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I actually like it. I think it's great dynamically, quick blast then, sounds and feels very promising but importantly as a daily driver which is where i do think this will spend most of its time pretty awesome so looking forward to getting involved with this thing very soon as always thank you so much for watching and i shall see you next time ciao